Well, I'm certainly not looking forward to this challenge, dreading it, as is my bank account. Dave takes it on, goes out there and gets you the answers you've asked for, and a number of you have all asked the same question or pointed out the same thing. Our centres around how can BP Pulse and others get away with blatantly ripping off their customers with surcharges. Haven't we seen this very recently with new car dealers? So, here goes. Pricing for EV charging is a nightmare with prices for non-members ranging from 25 pence right up to 85 pence. It's the same electricity. All comes from the grid. One assumes that all the charging networks pay roughly the same price for that electricity. Well, different networks have differing success with their chargers as a business profit centre. Well, now, so again. In fact, it's likely only one company in the world makes a profit out of their charging network. Shell reported they were making a large loss on their charging network and recently announced it was looking for a buyer. ChargePoint and Blink in the States reported very recently they've just run out of money. And unless new funds are found really quickly, they'll go bust at the end of the year. Yeah, what's that, about six weeks away? PwC, PricewaterhouseCooper, probably the world's largest accountancy firm, did a full study and analysis and produced several reports for businesses thinking of getting into the fast-growing EV charging market. This reported that the payback and profit from running EV chargers is high risk, but potential high gain. They look at four scenarios for investment in EV charging and all are fraught with high risk, but equally huge success and profits for those who do get it right. Tesla operates the world's largest ultra-rapid network, and that network makes a profit. Well, not only that, they're increasing the number of charges being installed every year, and it's growing year on year. This year to date is over 30% up on last year's installs. And while the profit and loss from super uh, supercharging is not broken out as a totally separate item, just lumped in with general services and repairs and warranties, analysts conclude that the supercharging network does indeed make a very substantial profit, and now forms a multi-billion pound business, dollar business, within the Tesla brand that's growing rapidly and likely to grow even faster now that the US has adopted Tesla proprietary charger plug as standard across all the manufacturers and the government is helping them with grants and subsidies. Isn't the world a strange place? Well, Legacy Auto stick to tried and tested and financially stable methods of production and operating, and after a hundred years of following this plan, well, there are now several on the point of going bankrupt, having built up astronomical debts. These were once regarded financially as the blue chip stocks, and amazingly, General Motors still is today. Well, most of them are struggling under an absolutely massive debt and crashing new car sales. Values are changing rapidly, and today's security seems to be tomorrow's risk. BP Pulse charged the highest rate in the UK at 85 pence per kilowatt hour for rapid chargers, and typically 59 pence uh, at one of the many fast chargers, rated about 7 kilowatts. So this raises an obvious question. Who in the right mind would go to a BP 7 kilowatt fast charger, sit and wait for 6, 8 or 10 hours to get a full charge at 59 pence per kilowatt hour? when it could quite easily go and find an ultra-rapid charger nearby costing 35 pence per kilowatt hour and top it up in less than half an hour while having a nice cup of coffee. And the answer, it seems, very pleasingly, from early, early results, is not that many. Well, it all comes down to business models, and these are a vital element in the success of any business. It's usually not the product or services that results in their success or failure, but their business model failure. Anyone can develop a business plan when you're setting up a business or growing an existing business. On well, the first stage, you just sit down with a piece of paper and look at the market, the players, the offerings, the existing size of the market, see if there are any gaps, any shortcomings. And then second, look at your product or your service and see where it fits in, how much of the market you could expect to gain, your costs, your pricing, what the customers are prepared to pay, and see if it results in a potential profit. Well, even an idiot, don't need to be an accountant, can see that the first stage should always be actual data and the second is entirely hypothetical. How much of the market you can take and the price your new customers will be willing to pay for your offering is pure guesswork. 
Yeah, you can make some educated guesses based on other people already entering or leaving that market, but for most people it's pure guesswork. Most new startups, startups of any sort offer something quite different, maybe better, more stylish, more efficient, more reliable or cheaper that will convince a number of potential buyers to switch to you. And that's where BP Pulse and indeed Shell Recharge and others have me baffled. I look at Aldi and Lidl supermarkets by comparison. They looked at the existing supermarkets over 25 years ago and saw a virtual monopoly operating at reasonably high prices and high profit margins. They looked at their own suppliers, existing suppliers and existing stores, and calculated they could operate cheaper, attract a larger, large number of buyers away from the old supermarkets to theirs by offering really cut price foods and services. Not too many concentrate on quantity but a good quality. They never intended to offer the huge range of products that the supermarkets did, merely enough to convince enough shoppers to get the bulk of their basic shopping there and only use other supermarkets for the better range, the top of the range and other services. And this business plan has been a startling success. Vast growth in Aldi and Lidl stores. I cannot see any possible business model for BP and Shell that would even have a hope of succeeding if they offer exactly the same product, identical in every way, but just at three times the price. Electricity is electricity. And everyone who doesn't generate their own, and even some of those that do, they get it from the grid. It's the same. It's not better, not higher quality. Electricity from a BP pulse charger is identical in every way to that from an Ionity or GridSurf charger. In fact, most of their competitors offer faster delivery of that electricity. Well, that's in effect, is a better service for a cheaper price. While it may come out faster or slower depending on the power rating of the charger, still exactly the same electricity. So going back to those original business models, who decided that they could sell exactly the same electricity as others around at that time at three times the price and make a successful business from it? Well, to be fair, maybe there was a short-term opportunity a few years ago. Tesla's superchargers back then were few and far between. There were huge gaps in the EV charging network for long-distance drivers and no other reliable, efficient networks anywhere in sight. They had hundreds of petrol stations with bits of the forecourts available where they could just stick an EV charger quite cheaply. They could fill in the gaps and drum up quite a bit of business. Well, that as a business model could work. But one of the second most important elements of the business model is to track exactly what is actually happening, the results, and measure that against the business model guesses that you made. Now, to look at this, you look at uh, the US car dealers. The new car market over in the States is an absolute mess. New car sales around the world peaked back in 2015, 2016, setting records, but since been on a rapid decline. Both the number of cars sold and turnover have been steadily reducing. Hammered certainly by Covid and supply chain shortages, but it was already declining well before that. The OEMs and the dealers simply ignored the reality and cut out the base models, concentrating on the more profitable luxury models loaded with stacks of extras that cost the manufacturers actually very little. And the results still slipped. Yeah, there were occasional quarters where sales rose, but they're not back to peak levels. Nowhere near, not even pre-COVID levels, and they were bad. Profits growing, but mostly artificial as the debt rose faster. And that is exactly what BP, Pulse and Shell and others have resorted to. As the use of their EV chargers has declined year after year, they simply buried their heads in the sand waiting for better times and increased prices direct rip-off from those US car dealers. They called it the market adjustment. Well, BP and Shell both operate an increase in prices by way of transaction charge. Several viewers have commented on additional fees on top of their already ridiculous 85 pence per kilowatt hour. They amount to as much as £1.75. Yeah, whatever the actual price of the electricity, you get charged a fee of up to £1.75 for using that charger. Shell does exactly the same. Middle to a lower level, they're around 35 pence just for the privilege of using that charger. More likely, it's a fee that goes direct to Shell to compensate them for the fact that the site takes a small cut of the profit. 
I'm absolutely delighted to see that in America, the dealers are now fully stocked and stacked with unsold and unsellable new cars. They finally just price themselves out of the market. Totally. People have given up buying new cars. Yeah, the massive hike in interest rates hasn't helped, but the price gap between what you get for your car as a trade-in and the price of the new model this year, or even compared to last year's new model, is just massive. A debt burden too far. Well, checking this morning with BP, I found that the NEC has an action-packed agenda. Almost every day something's happening, and most days several events occur in different halls. Yet the fast 7 kilowatt EV chargers recently installed in the car parks are deserted. 130 available out of 150 installed. And the rapid chargers, the 150 kilowatt CTS2 chargers, have 31 available out of 40 installed. Well, several regular viewers said that these can or often need to be pre-booked, yet when they get there, they're unable to charge. Reports are coming in, state that people have to move and try several times on different chargers before finding one where the charging session actually works. I see the US new car dealers in serious trouble, and even the recent rash of discounting is not reported to have made any difference whatsoever. You see, if a car used to cost, say, $45,000 but crept up to over $80,000, but discounting even by 20% down to 64,000 is not going to help, not going to make any difference. They're not going to last long. BP and Shell, even discounting by 10 or 20% down to 68 pence, will not stop the rush to charge elsewhere much faster, much cheaper. Maybe they need a little nudge. Maybe we should all actually look at the price they charge and head immediately elsewhere. But maybe if you have no choice whatsoever, as there are no other charges anywhere nearby, well, go and charge there, but shoot them off an email stating that the second there is a choice, you'll be gone. BP will survive a little longer in the EV charging world, but only a little. You see, the mega hub at the NEC was a joint venture. It was entirely funded by others. Only an idiot in the business world would refuse to install hundreds of chargers if they get paid for them. Whether or not they're ever used, that's irrelevant. Had they had to dig deep into their own pocket, I doubt very much whether this, this installation would have gone ahead. Now, I know BP just announced they're buying Tesla V4 chargers, but there is still plenty of money around in the form of grants and subsidies, which again make installing these an absolute no-brainer. Operating them, that's different. But ChargePoint and Blink have just discovered what happens when the grants and subsidies finally run out. I am eagerly awaiting for the day when BP and Shell finally run out of grants and subsidies, not only for the EV chargers, but also for the oil and gas exploration and refineries. I'm Dave.